Number 10, which molecule has the largest dipole moment? Is it A, B, C, or D? Well, let's start with answer choice A, carbon tetrabromide, CBr4. Carbon has an electronegativity value of 2.5, whereas bromine has an EN value of 2.8. The electronegativity difference is 0.3. In order for a bond to be polar, the electronegativity difference has to be equal to or greater than 0.5. So the carbon bromine bond is relatively nonpolar. But the fact that the electronegativity values are not the same, you do have a slight partial negative charge on bromine and a partially positive charge on carbon. So there's a small dipole moment in those bonds, but for all practical purposes, those bonds are considered relatively nonpolar. To draw the dipole moment, we need to draw an arrow that points towards the electronegative atom, in this case, bromine. Now, these arrows are going to be small because the electronegativity difference is relatively small. But notice that all four outer atoms of this molecule are the same. And for this tetrahedral shape, all of the dipole moments will cancel because the arrows, they're all pointing in opposite directions. So the dipole moment for carbon tetrabromide is going to be zero. It is completely nonpolar. Now looking at answer choice B, carbon dioxide. The carbon oxygen bond is highly polar. Oxygen has an electronegativity value of 3.5. So the EN difference is one. So that's a polar bond, but the dipole moments, they cancel. Because there's two carbon oxygen bonds that point in opposite direction, there's going to be no net dipole moment. So even though this molecule has polar bonds, the molecule overall is nonpolar because the dipole moments cancel. Now look at answer choice D, the carbon chlorine bond. That bond is a polar bond. Chlorine has an electronegativity value of 3.0, so we have an EN difference of 0.5, so it's just on the threshold. Now, if we were to draw the dipole moments for the carbon chlorine bond, notice that the arrows, they all point in opposite directions. So if you were to draw them like vectors, the arrow at the top, it's going in the positive y direction. Then we have an arrow in this direction and one in that direction. Now the two arrows at the bottom, they both have a y component that goes in a negative y direction. The one on the right has an x component and the one on the left has an x component going to the left. The x components, they cancel because they're opposite to each other. The two y components, they're additive, but they cancel with the vector on top. So all of the x and y components cancel. Therefore, the dipole moment of 135-trichlorobenzene is zero. Overall, that's a nonpolar molecule. Now, looking at carbon fluorine, that bond is very polar. Fluorine has an electronegativity value of 4.0, so the EN difference is 1.5. So we're dealing with a highly polar bond. The dipole moment is going to go towards the electronegative fluorine atom. Now, if we look at the carbon hydrogen bond, it's nonpolar, but the EN difference is 0.4, so we do have a small dipole moment there. The arrow is going to point towards the more electronegative carbon atom. So we have a dipole moment here going towards the carbon atom, a small dipole moment here as well, and another one. Now notice that the Y components of these two will cancel. This one has an upward Y component. This one has a downward Y component. But the X components of each of these three vectors, generally they're towards the right. Each of them has an X component towards the right. So the net dipole moment is pointing in the positive 
x direction based on the way the molecule is written. So these dipole moments, they do not cancel. So this molecule has a dipole moment that is above zero, which means it's going to have the largest dipole moment. And the fact that it has a dipole moment overall tells us that this molecule is a polar molecule.